Hello friends. About six months after my amazing third eye experience, which I go into detail in another video, I was hospitalized and diagnosed with schizophrenia, bipolar disease, and mania. What happened to me, as I found out later, is what many have called Kundalini Syndrome or a spiritual emergency. Now I'm sharing this as a warning so that others can avoid this thing that happened to me. So after my amazing third eye experience, I just went on with normal life, right? I, I went back to normal consciousness. I was still in college, still studying, attending school, but I started questioning everything and I soon dropped out of school because I was like, what am, what am I doing? Well, I, I should focus only on this amazing state of being that, that opened within me, this state of consciousness. Am I supposed to be some enlightened master now? I was very self-conscious. I was started to freak out. I started to stress out about it. Looking back, I wish I had just calmed down take a deep breath and just chilled, but I was really starting to freak out. I kept it to myself because I feared apathy from friends and family. So I couldn't, didn't really share it, I didn't really open up about it and kept it all with myself and, and started to become very paranoid. And I believe when my third eye opened, I kind of awakened some siddhis, as they say in yoga, or some psychic powers or psychic abilities. And at the time I was 19 years old and I definitely was not ready for this level of, of spiritual advancement or, or siddhis or psychic powers. I was not emotionally or mentally ready at all. I went into fear, and because my thoughts were fearful, my experiences started becoming fearful. The thoughts I was having seemed to manifest almost instantaneously in the, people, the things that people would say around me or the, the situations that would occur around me. I basically went into like a psychedelic trip without ever taking any psychedelics, and it was a bad trip. The power of manifestation was very strong, and things were just really out of control. The more scared I got, the worse thoughts I would have, the, the more intense the experiences would be around me. Sadhguru has talked about how he, he avoids teaching the Anahata meditation or getting people into the Anahata space because it's very powerful and your thoughts become things instantaneously and you become a very powerful creator. And to get to that step, you really need to be in control of your emotions and your mental state, your thoughts and your feelings, and be able to quiet the intellect instantly if it starts to get out of hand, the monkey mind starts to get out of control, has to be able to quiet down and to be able to keep a sweetness of emotions, stay in that state of love and gratitude. I definitely was not ready for this. I was young, naive, and just this explosion of opening of consciousness happened to me, and I was not ready. I did not have a guru or guide to, to help me in this new, this new opening, this new awakening. And I got to a kind of a catatonic state. I stopped talking, I stopped eating, and I was just in this, in this daze of fear, kind of paralyzed with fear because my thoughts were so powerful. And it was this, this vicious cycle like, oh, don't think of that, it's gonna happen because I was trying to resist it so much, of course I was thinking about it, so then it would happen. The people I were with at the time did not really know what to do with me, and rightfully so, I wasn't responding, I was just kind of frozen in fear. So I was hospitalized, and in the hospital they, they diagnosed me with schizophrenia, and bipolar disease, and mania. I don't believe I had any of those things, it's just that the Western medicine are not aware of these these spiritual states of being or states of mind, these openings of consciousness. And since I wasn't ready for it, I was so mature that I couldn't really control it. In Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, Patanjali talks about there's nine obstacles to the path of enlightenment. And one of them is called Paranti Darshana, which is hallucinations or getting stuck in a narrative in the mind. And this is definitely what happened to me and I got hit it with like a brick wall. I had this narrative in my mind, this, this the superstitions, this fear about what was happening to me, what was going on, just pure paranoia, and it was like a really bad trip. And Western medicine does not consider such things as spiritual emergency or psychic awakenings. There exist spontaneous, non-ordinary states that would in the West be seen and treated as psychosis, treated mostly by suppressive medication. But if we use observations from the study of non-ordinary states and also from other spiritual traditions, they should really be treated as crises of transformation or crises of spiritual opening, something that should really be supported rather than suppressed. If properly understood and properly supported, they are actually conducive to healing and transformation. That is from Stanislav Grof. Episodes of this kind, or spiritual emergencies, have been described in sacred literature of all ages as a result of meditative practices and as signposts of the mystical path. Stanislav and Christina Grof. Gopi Krishna in his autobiography, Living with Kundalini, when he had an amazing Kundalini experience, at first it wasn't amazing, it was very frightening to him, and he describes it in depth in his book. 
because he is, as well was not ready for such an awakening and such an explosion of new perceptions. The days that followed his Kundalini awakening had all the appearance of a prolonged nightmare. It seemed as if I had abruptly precipitated myself from the steady rock of normality into a madly racing whirlpool of abnormal existence. This psychic trauma or Kundalini syndrome experience that I had really affected me for several years. The upside of it was that I learned without a doubt that your thoughts create your reality. So the warning I have is be aware or beware of your thoughts, of how you think of other people, of how you think about everything, because that's what you will experience. It's just energy physics. What you put out is what you get back. It is reality is a mirror. So if you send out bad, negative, frightening thoughts, it's exactly the experience you're going to get. So become aware of your thoughts and through practice of meditation and mindfulness, control your thoughts and let go of the ones that go to the dark side. Another warning is don't push yourself too quickly into these expansive states of awareness if you're not ready. I was very eager as a, as a young, young student and I was kind of grasping for it and that's not the way to do it. You should be a surrender and you should have a foundation of love and gratitude. I did not have that base of sweetness of emotion, of, of simple love. I was kind of desperate and reaching and wanting, and that's coming from the ego. And because of that, I hit a wall and totally spiraled downwards. The unfolding of your advancement will happen at the pace that it needs to. Do not push it too quickly. Two of the most famous spiritual masters in our known history, right, is Jesus, Yeshua, and the Buddha. And both of them, there are stories of them being tempted to use their new awakened awareness and powers, right, from the ego. Jesus was tempted by, you know, the devil in the desert three times, and Buddha was tempted by Mara as he sat under the Bodhi tree. These temptations are, are significant, and they, are, they serve as thresholds of moving from the individual will, the ego's, you know, fears and desires, and moving into the, the state of operating from the will of the one, the will of the whole, working for the best of everyone, the one spirit, and letting go of the individualistic thinking, survival thinking, fear-based thinking, and desire. This threshold or gateway into this next level, I definitely was not ready for, obviously. The experience was very humbling, which was good, and it gave me a very clear message of to beware of your thoughts and to keep your thoughts in check. Do not let them run the show. I believe this is why in the yogic tradition there is such a strong emphasis of your teacher or guru and letting them help you in these situations and to gradually kind of lead you along the way so you don't too quickly open up these centers or these these perceptions or these cities and then spiral out of control so the advice is always focus on love and what will need to happen will happen you must have faith and trust if you push too too fast and too hard that's coming from ego and it's not going to go so well at least it didn't in my experience that's all i can speak of Having said that, yes, of course, I encourage people to seek these experiences, seek these expansions. My third eye experience changed my life forever, and it was overwhelming and so, so, so amazing. So mind-blowing, so heart-opening, so melting, and just so, I was just swoon from it. You can't even describe it. The love, the love, the love that was felt. So, of course, I encourage people to seek these openings and awakenings. But from my experience, it's to do it humbly and at a pace that is natural to you and to trust that things will unfold at the right time and have the discipline to go through the necessary training necessary mind training so that you're at a controlled state of equanimity of peace of love so that you don't let your thoughts run off into fear or desire thank you